What's going on my friends? This is Dustin Stelzer with Electrician U. Today we're going to talk about how circuit breakers work. So what is a circuit breaker? A circuit breaker is what we call overcurrent protection devices. Um, they're similar to fuses in that they stop dangerous things from happening in electrical circuits by de-energizing that circuit. Um, typical circuit breakers look like a switch. If you've ever gone out in your electrical panel and looked, there's a whole bunch of these little switches. Really all it is is something that connects and, and disconnects a circuit. They can be thought of as safety shutoff devices really, but all they're doing is disconnecting power or reconnecting power. They don't actually put out any kind of power. A 60 amp breaker doesn't give you 60 amps worth of electricity. A 60 amp breaker essentially says, I'm gonna allow this much current to go through and anything more than this, I'm shutting the circuit off because it's dangerous. So how does a circuit breaker work? Well, there are a whole bunch of different types of circuit breakers and we'll get into that in a little bit, but the average type of circuit breaker that you're gonna see in a house or a business, um, a miniature circuit breaker or MCB is an inverse time breaker. So it works basically uh, the more current that goes through the breaker, the more of an overcurrent that happens, the quicker it shuts off. So these are the typical breakers that you're gonna see in every home up to a certain level. If you're talking like massive, gigantic custom homes, you'll probably see some MCCBs, which are molded case circuit breakers. Um, they have a little bit of adjustability and things that are that make them different they don't have the thermal ability to shut off for heat they're really just magnetic again we'll get into that in a minute <laughs> but really what we're talking about are just typical breakers in houses so they're what we call thermomagnetic devices this means that each one of them has two different ways that they can trip the circuit one is thermally and one is magnetically so uh, inside of a circuit breaker if you break one open and look you're gonna have two different elements or two different mechanical pieces um, that are able to influence the opening and shutting of a circuit breaker. Um, so th the reason why you have the thermal part is that say you have a 20 amp breaker, 20 amp wire going to a 20 amp load. And over time, that load starts to become faulty. Like say it's a fan or something and that fan starts to get bound up with a bunch of dirt and grease and stuff. And it starts to, to have a little bit more resistance to its turning. That's going to draw more current over time. So say that fan starts to draw like 21 or 22 or 23 amps, that breaker will still stay on and it'll still keep the load connected. But over time, it's going to bend a little bimetallic strip inside of that breaker. This is the thermal side of the breaker. And over time, it will pull apart the contacts and trip that breaker. This is just for an overload situation, meaning that that motor or that load is now overloaded. It's creating more current than it was designed for. And the circuit therefore is starting to draw more current than it should. So the breaker needs to know to shut that off because it's not an impact. It's not something that's that's a uh, an event that's happening that's dangerous. It's something that over time can build up enough heat so that the conductors going out to that load start to get really, really hot. And then the insulation that's around those conductors starts to melt. And once that insulation melts off the conductors, then you just have bare conductors sitting there, which can cause a fire, can cause somebody to get electrocuted, a whole bunch of different dangerous things that can happen. But that's one type of event. That's just a load where there's too many things that are on a really small conductor that, you know, they're not like a catastrophic event. It's just a little bit of excess heating that happens over a long period of time. But that needs to be able to shut the circuit off so that the conductors and the load don't become damaged and people don't get hurt. Now the other side is the magnetic portion. The magnetic element is for uh, something that happens as, as a very strong, sudden hit of a lot of current at one time. This is what we call a short circuit, sometimes a ground fault, 
Um, although ground fault breakers are a whole different thing, a ground fault is still a short circuit of sorts, but it is a huge amount of current going through the circuit at one time. So a breaker usually needs to be able to trip up to 10,000 amps of current going through at one time and anything above and beyond that, if the breaker is not designed for more than 10,000 amps, then that breaker is gonna blow up. Some breakers have higher ratings. They have a, uh, an interrupter rating of 22,000. And that's usually for like HVAC equipment and things that are a little bit bigger, more stout loads. They can handle more of a fault current that happens. But the magnetic side of this is for short circuits specifically. It is for a massive spike, a massive inrush of current all of a sudden. So for the standard breaker, that's the only things that they need to protect. They need to protect over a long period of time, a little bit of heat buildup and kicking that circuit out so nothing happens, or they need to be able to protect if there's a short circuit, if something malfunctions in that load and all of a sudden you have one hot wire and a neutral wire that boom, connect each other. You don't want that circuit to keep going because that insulation is gonna get so hot and melt and you're gonna have metal welding. It's gonna be extremely, extremely dangerous. Now there are some circuits out there that use an electronic trip. These are usually controlled by a microprocessor and a little bit of programming and logic, but we're not going to get into that. There's tons and tons of different types of circuit breakers. So let's do a little overview of all the different types. Like I mentioned before, we have the MCB and the MCCB. The MCB is the miniature circuit breaker. These are the breakers that you're talking about in most residential electrical panels. Then the MCCB is the molded case circuit breaker and they call it a molded case because generally it's a huge rectangular brick and inside this brick, a lot of the parts can be changed out and they can use the same molded case for multiple different size circuit breakers. They can switch the handle out and they can switch the contacts and everything on the inside out and ship out these different molded cased breakers. Now there are also two different classes of breakers which the MCB and MCCB can both fall within, but the classes of breakers that you're gonna see even in the electrical code are the inverse time circuit breaker and the instantaneous trip circuit breaker. So inverse time, like I mentioned before, is basically the more current that goes through and more overcurrent that goes through a circuit, uh, a circuit breaker, the quicker it is going to trip. It has an inverse proportion to the ratio of time to current. This is the most common type of circuit breaker that you're going to come across. The other is the instantaneous trip. So the instantaneous trip has a set value. And when this value is violated or met, that circuit breaker will trip. Now, these are typically not thermally active. They're only magnetically active. They don't have the thermal overload so that, you know, a little bit of extra heat over time is not going to kick the circuit out like an inverse time circuit breaker would. Uh, instantaneous trip circuit breakers are, are more things that you're going to find in like really, really large residential applications, 1200 amp services, stuff like that, or uh, large commercial and industrial applications. Both the instantaneous trip and the inverse time breakers are going to have the adjustable and non-adjustable options. So yeah, a lot of times you'll see breakers that have like this tiny little screw that you can sit and adjust the trip settings. There's a sensitivity basically to a lot of these that can be set um, or, you know, like certain trip curves and there's a lot that can go into some of these breakers, but just know that some of them are adjustable and some of them aren't. Now, the other kind of breakers that you're going to come across are really specialty kinds of breakers. Um, so you'll find things like a shunt trip breaker where you might be in a kitchen somewhere in a commercial kitchen, like at a restaurant and uh, the entire hood where everybody's cooking, if there's a fire needs to be able to shut the electricity off. So these breakers can be wired and remotely tripped if an event happens. So usually there's a what they call an Ansel panel. Um, there's different brands and things, but it's basically a control panel that senses it's hooked up to the fire system um, and it senses if there's a problem, it'll go trip the circuits. Uh, a lot of these are tied to like chemical suppression systems and things like that, but it, uh, it's more in environments where you have kitchens or you need to be able to remotely send a signal if something occurs, we need the breakers, we need all the electrical to shut off so that a big emergency doesn't happen. It doesn't have anything really to do with the amount of current going through that breaker, although the breakers themselves do still have the thermomagnetic elements in them most of the time. 
Another kind of circuit breaker you'll run into is a smart breaker. Smart breakers are very similar to shunt trip breakers in that they can be remotely controlled. They can be turned on, turned off. You can see if they're tripping, if there's, there's a whole bunch of diagnostics and things that can happen through a low voltage communication circuit. Um, so a lot of like big box stores, you know, like Home Depots and Walmarts and stuff like that, um, you'll have a low voltage signal that can come in and out. And then you have the regular part of the breaker that's thermomagnetic, so it can trip function just like normally there's usually a manually uh, a manual button that you can uh, engage and disengage the low voltage communication part of it um, and then anybody on like a remote monitoring facility thousands of miles away can see on a computer screen like oh crap that trip or that breaker tripped we need to get a tech out there and figure out what's going on some other types of breakers that you're going to see in residential applications are going to be uh, arc fault circuit interrupters. Sometimes they're called combination arc fault circuit interrupters, um, meaning just a regular arc fault cir circuit interrupter does just series arcs usually, um, where a combination arc fault circuit interrupter is going to do both uh, series and parallel arcs. So it's just basically there's something there's a there's an electronic board or an electronic trip mechanism on the inside as well as a thermal and magnetic trip element. But the electronic trip element is basically a little computer board that has uh, algorithms and things that are running on its software that's analyzing circuits that can tell if there's certain characteristics that come up and it senses that there's arcing happening on a circuit, it'll trip that circuit. So it's pretty advanced. Uh, most houses here in the US are, are requiring them in the majority of the home. You also have ground fault circuit interrupters. Um, these are very similar in that there's still the thermal magnetic elements inside of the breaker that trip just normally like a normal breaker would, but also there's a current transformer on the inside that can monitor a difference in current flow from a hot and a neutral, and it can see if there's an imbalance all of a sudden. That's usually what happens when current's all of a sudden taking a, a shortcut somewhere and not going where it's supposed to be going. Um, so a lot of times through like a human, <laughs> when you go to plug something into a wall uh, and you get shocked, current's gonna go through you, so a breaker can detect any sort of like very, very fast uh, very small deviations between a hot and a neutral. Speaking of circuit breakers, Connecticut Electric actually makes weird circuit breakers. Um, a lot of old legacy systems like Federal Pacific, Pushmatic, Wadesworth, things like Challenger that, that are not even around anymore um, because these are outlawed panels, because they cause fires and things like that. Um, this company makes brand new circuit breakers that fit these old systems. They're up to modern UL standards. Um, so instead of having to replace the entire service, a lot of times you don't have to. A lot of times the, the bus on the panel is just fine. There's no reason to replace the entire thing. You can, especially in a service call or something where it's like late at night, you just have to get power going rather than taking out like a used breaker out of some old system that you worked on three months ago and it's just sitting in your garage and you're putting this old crappy breaker in, you can actually get brand new breakers and you can get a customer taken care of without having to replace the entire panel. So if you wanna know more about Connecticut Electric and the breakers that they offer, there's a link in the description below. Check that out. So that's pretty much it. That's the majority of breakers that you're going to come across as an electrician from day to day. There, of course, are other things like air breakers and vacuum breakers and things like that that are like medium and high voltage applications. You're talking like 10,000 volt, you know, 2,000 volt stuff like that. But this is the majority of what you're going to come across as an electrician. So I um, hope that did something for you guys. Let me know if you guys have any comments, questions, leave them below. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you give a thumbs up. Hit the notification bell so you always see these. If you're interested in any merch uh, we got some t-shirts on the website electricianu.com if you're looking for some practice tests if you're taking your you know, journeyman or residential license or your master license we've got some exam prep stuff on the website so you can actually take the tests you know there's printable copies as well um, go to electricianu.com and as always i love you crazy people thanks for the support and i will see you in the next one Best can't music and video.